Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. As you can see, the weather is beautiful out right now, and it's perfect time to get ready for winter. Everybody knows how much I hate winter, so this is a new tool that I picked up for combating winter, and I think it'll make things a little bit better. So what I've got here is an eight foot, single stage, loader mounted snowblower with its own engine. It's got a Wisconsin V4 on it, and it's a v, VH4D, um, and it runs really good. Um, it was basically a barn find. They had converted it um, to use with the three-point on the tractor. Um, they bought it, the previous owner bought it 25 years ago, did the modifications to it, used it once or twice, and it's been sitting in the barn ever since. Um, it originally was bought by a local municipality. Years before that, they had it mounted on the front of a truck for cleaning up uh, the snow in town and filling dump trucks. And it's a little giant. I've not found any information on this company. Nothing yet anyway. Um, I mean, the serial number is pretty high, 52,776. You know, so it's possibly a 1976 model is my guess. Usually the last two numbers are the year. Um, I've seen that before, so it's hard telling but it's a pretty nice unit. There's not a lot of paint removed off of the, off of the auger here. So, and the, somebody, I think it would be the municipality added this cutting edge. This is actually some pretty hard stuff here. So I'm guessing they got into some pretty, pretty uh, tough stuff and it's totally serviceable. Got uh, pillow blocks, you know, flange bearings out here, so you easily pull this thing apart. Uh, looks like about a 80 or 100 uh, roller chain from the gear case. Uh, it's a pretty nice unit. The first thing we got to do here is one of the most common things with these Wisconsin engines, and hopefully you can see I'm not blocking the light too bad. I already pulled the shroud off this side of the motor, and we've got a mouse nest big pile in here so i'm not getting cooling across the motor that'll take out these wisconsin engines almost right away so we'll go ahead and pull that all out of there clean her out the best we can and get the shrouding back on and start her up Well, that cleaned out pretty good. There's the nest. And uh, believe it or not, I found one of the mice and it's down here. Uh, it was dead. Right there, a little shrew. And those things are bad all around. They get into the beehives and they kill the bees too. So um, yeah, now we got her all cleaned out. Looking pretty good. We can go ahead and Put this shroud back on and I might take a quick peek on the other side, but I had good airflow over there. All right, I got the shrouds all back on. Let's start her up. All right, I got airflow. On both sides, that's good. That's the number one killer of Wisconsin engines. Yeah, good airflow. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this thing in gear.
Well, I say that runs pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it run, burn some of the crappy gas out of it, and then we'll get it inside the shop, change the oils, um, service everything that needs to be serviced, and start getting the quick catch mount on it. And then we'll wait for winter and we'll blow some snow. All right, so I just got it inside. If you're wondering why I'm dressed up so warm, it's uh, it got cold here the other night and I just turned the heat on back here. It's gonna take a while to warm up in the back shop here, but I, I only ever keep it about 50 degrees in here anyway. Keep the uh, welding coolant from freezing up and things like that. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna change the oils in both the transmission and the motor, take this stuff off, and I've got a quick attach plate that we're gonna modify to attach to this. Um, and then there's a repair we got to do on one of the side flaps. I'm sure this will be difficult to see, but right there is the drain plug. Just have to get in there and get it opened up. If I can. Oh, there it turned. That oil doesn't look too terribly bad. It's a little dark, but it really don't look terrible. So I'll get that drained out. As soon as I get that drained out, and uh, or let it dribble for a while, then we'll pull the plug on the transmission here and drain that out also. Uh, that takes the same oil as in the motor, and we're gonna run just 1030 in this. Um, if I have to in the winter, I'll throw a crankcase heater on it or just bring it in the shop uh, the day before I need it, you know, if a big snowstorm's coming. Okay, while we're waiting for the engine oil to drain, I'm gonna start removing this extraneous junk that we're not gonna need for this. So, let's get that off of here. All right, well, it's still dripping out oil. I'm gonna go ahead and get the filter off. Well, that wasn't super tight. We'll have a little bit of cleanup here. Changing that oil filter is always a, a pain on these. I'm just gonna let that motor dribble a little longer. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up these, this cover here because this is, it says to fill it from here, which makes the most sense. This is the adjustment point also. And right there's the tag that says, use the same motor oil, the same oil in the motor as you do in the crank K or the transmission here. And I have not found a single bit of information on this snowblower. Um, I've been searching and searching. I can't find any info on the company if it still exists. It's Little Giant. Um, they're in Nebraska. But I have not found anything else. So if anybody has any information, I would greatly appreciate it if uh, you'd forward it on.
Well, that looks like it's dripping slow, very slowly now. We'll go ahead and plug the crankcase and we'll get the new filter on it. Let's go ahead and get this drain plug out. All right, she's loose. I hope you guys can see this. Yeah, even that oil doesn't look terrible. Yeah, not much left there. It's coming out good. All right, I got the drain plug back in. Next step here is to open this plug. So this is the fill level. So we'll get this open. Then we start pouring in our oil until it comes out that plug. And we're there. We'll put the plug back in. Now, I don't have any books for this thing, but what I'm seeing here is looks like almost another oil reservoir that needs to be filled up. I don't feel a drain plug under there, but we're gonna go ahead and pull this plug and just see what it looks like. And we may have to uh, fill this up. Maybe it drained out, I don't know. Um, like I said, I don't have any information on this thing. Oh, okay, that's actually what that is, is the the ports for adjusting the clutch. So that's definitely don't need to put oil in there. We're all good. And I can go ahead and close this back up. The gasket's still there. Somebody siliconed the gasket on and then the silicone didn't hold on the cover. I'm not too concerned. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So we'll go ahead and put all our labels back on. And according to everything I've read on these things, they hold about three and a half quarts. So let's put oil in and we'll see where we're at. This is a two gallon jug, so it's about half of it. Perfect, just over the full mark. That should be enough to fill the oil filter also. All right, let's start this thing back up and check for oil leaks. All right, looks good. All right, so the next step of this whole project, we got the oil changed, we got all the junk off that we don't need anymore for mounting, but the next thing is my mount. And what I'm using is a skid steer quick attach plate. Um, I set up my payloader with a quick attach because the tools are readily available. Um, and my payloader's small, it's about four to 5,000 pound lift, uh, maybe a little more. But I bought these on Scamazon and 
they've been, you know, they work, but they aren't great. And the problem is, is the lip here for your quick attach to drop under and pick it up is too small. Um, it, it likes to pop off real easy. These are bent probably a little too wide. Um, so there isn't a lot of grab, but this is the big problem. And what I've been doing is taking this piece of three ace by one and just add it in there. Weld that in and then add some gussets for a little more strength. And that gives me a very deep pocket now for locking into the quick attach. So let's get that welded up and uh, then we can start drilling for the mounting. All right, so you saw me grind this. The uh, first thing I'm doing here is just taking the mill scale off where I'm gonna weld. Because uh, welding is 90% preparation, 10% skill. And if you don't do the prep work, your welds are gonna look like crap or they're not gonna hold. So grind that mill scale off and get a good, a good base metal that you can work with. Well, our top bar extension is all welded in and uh, got our little braces on here. This is where all the torque will be when the quick attach plate is here um, on the top of the uh, top of the plate. So it comes in here and this is the lift point. Now we'll get it laid out and drill our holes and then countersink them for a, a, a flush head bolt. Um, that's gonna, we need, we can't have anything sticking out in here because the plate sits tight to the quick attach. So we'll get this laid out, draw it up, uh, marked out where the holes go, and then go drill them, countersink them, and then we can start mounting the, bot the bottom part on there, and then we'll make some top plates that'll go, that'll go here to the quick attach plate, and then that'll all get welded on both sides. So this is be, be a completely removable piece when we're all done, um, in case I ever want to put this on a different machine or have to get in there and service the motor better because um, it's going to kind of fill that space in. Okay, before we do the drilling and the countersinking for the quick attach plate, I want to fix a few things up here because mostly because I had to order bolts and they won't be here for a couple days. So we'll wait for the bolts and then we'll finish that part of the video up and get that mounted. But I've got a few things here on the auger I want to address. Um, I got some damage right here. We're just going to heat that up and bend that back. Um, yeah, there too, rolled it right over. So we'll heat that and bend that around. And then the wing on that side's got a big ding, ding in it. We'll heat that up and bend that back out too.
it's a lot straighter than it was. Um, I'm happy with that. That should catch some snow good. I'll go over and straighten out that uh, part on the auger here that's rolled over. We'll just straighten it out and this one too will straighten out. But we should be okay. Those look a lot better, a little bit straighter. You know, I could uh, probably replace this part that's busted off, but I think we'll be okay. I mean, for the most part, it looks pretty good. All right, well, it's been a couple days. All the hardware just showed up. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lay out my lines for my holes um, that I gotta drill. I gotta put four holes in the plate and we're gonna use these bolts um, so we're going to countersink them so they're flush in here. And then on the other piece on the, on the horizontal mount that comes off the back of this plate, we're just going to drill and then use um, flange bolts like this with uh, flange nuts on both of them to, and they're serrated so they'll lock in. So let's get this laid out and then we'll take it over to the AV, drill, and countersink, get it bolted on and then we'll make the other pieces, bolt them on, weld it, and then we'll be all ready to get this out of here. All right, we're over here at the AV. I got it laid out, center punched. I'm gonna go ahead and drill at 531. Um, we'll use the anchor lube on this. We'll drill all eight holes and then I'll come around and set up the countersink and we'll countersink them for that, uh, that bolt to fit. This is where things are going to get a little tough. Um, I'm still running. I'm at 300 RPM. I'm going to stay there, but I'm going to have to go in and stop and check several times before I lock my stop here up on the quill. And then we'll be able to just run every one of them the same. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little anchor lube on there. Go ahead and 
move it over and see how we look. Oh, that's perfect. So I'll set my lock right there. It's absolutely flush, just what I needed. And we'll go ahead and just cut them all that way. So I'll just run my quill down and then lock my stop. And we'll stop at exactly the same point on every one. Let's go ahead and get this thing mounted up. I already got my first bolt started through the plate. I'm just gonna start one hole and then move over. I decided to make those, those flat bars. We're using this half by four. I'm gonna shear it with the iron worker and then I'm gonna lay out, mark all my holes and punch them instead of drilling. All right, I got all my holes laid out. I put a center punch mark because there's a center punch and point in the center of each uh, punch and that'll help me line it up. And then I'll just use a little drop of anchor lube to lubricate the punch, but we'll just punch all these holes, it'll go real slick. Yeah, looks like they line up real nice. Of course, my shadow is blocking it. But I'll go ahead and I'm gonna grind this edge of the plate here for welding. The, the quick attach plate and this plate, get a nice chamfer on this, the plate we're putting on, and then we'll weld this all on solid, bolt it in, weld it in solid, and then we're done.
I got it tacked in place. I'm gonna just weld this all up. I've got her set up for thermal uh, for spray. So MIG spray and uh, we'll just burn this right in nice and hard. All right, I got it all tacked up. I've got the welder set up for MIG spray. Um, we're running C10 gas and I got her dialed right in. She's gonna burn like mad. So let's get this thing burnt in. They're both burnt in nice. I think that'll hold. So tomorrow morning I'll get the loader started and we'll get this out of here. Should be ready, ready for winter. There she is all mounted up ready to go as you can see we got a little bit of snow but this is not enough to work with um, this is going to be melting today uh, i'm going to have to hard pack the driveway down with some snow first um, get a nice layer of ice and then we'll be able to use the blower and just clean this crap out of here um, we're going to use the snot out of this this winter i'm just looking forward to it for once in my life i am ready for winter and i am ready to kick its ass so with that until next time get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.